Hi everybody, it's Diane from Sew Boutique. And today I wanted to share with you a new quilt project that we are launching on our website. And it's this, it is called Flower Garden and it's 100% pre-cut kit. And it's made from our collection of nuance gradation batiks and you might be surprised if you're looking at this quilt that it's actually only made from six fabrics and you get such a range of color from each one of the fabrics when they're one of our nuance gradation collection so i wanted to show it to you and first and foremost i wanted to apologize it is not quilted yet we just finished it and um we have a little surprise coming down the road, but we are going to be quilting this and we're going to take you through the process of quilting it, um, hopefully over the next couple of weeks so you'll see how it turns out. But I couldn't wait um, for it to just be quilted and I wanted to share the project. This little tutorial is going to take you through the process of making the blocks and putting the quilt together. So enjoy the next few steps. But first of all, I wanted to show you what it looked like and we'll get into the step-by-step -step of making the quilt. Enjoy this process and send us some questions if you have any. Take care. The fabrics that we selected for our flower garden are all gradations and I love the gradations when working with quilts simply because, especially a pieced quilt or one that has smaller pieces, because you actually can't even tell it's a gradation and you get such a variety of shades in your project. And it just kind of depends on where you put each one of the shades and how you use the fabric. But for the flower garden, we selected five fabrics. The first is Hyacinth Violet and it transitions color from this really, really beautiful, um, almost looks kind of petunia-ish, but it's brighter, to a um, beautiful purpley blue. Turquoise, which just shades from dark to light, so it's only one color. We have another one that's only one color, which is black cherry, and it goes from the darker shade to the lighter shade. Atlantis is one that I know you guys have seen a lot of, and it transitions in color from an ocean blue to a beautiful grass green. And this one I really love for backgrounds and other projects that you can put pre-cut um, flowers or anything on it, just kind of makes its own background without having to piece anything. And the fifth fabric that we used is also a very popular fabric and it's called Tequila Sunrise and you can tell. Um, it goes from a beautiful goldy yellow all the way, transitions from an orange all the way to a very, very beautiful red. And um, you'll see this one in various ways in our quilt project and it's, it's wonderful. The background, I'm gonna pull this out from the bottom of our stack, is Nautica. And this one doesn't transition as much. It's meant to be a pretty, pretty dark blue um, with, with just a subtle hint of transition. So it goes from the dark blue here down to more of a, actually even changes in intensity of blue to a little dustier um, shade of blue. And this is the entire background of our project. I'm going to show you one of the blocks by itself so that you can see how one of these fabrics transitions in and of itself into the flower petals in our block. So the background, and not each one of the background points is even the same shade, and it gives it a really, really neat look. And so each one of the flower petals including the centers, are from Tequila Sunrise. So you'll really enjoy this. Our flower garden quilt is completely pre-cut. 
And it was a while back. I've had this for a little bit of time and never did anything with it. But this may look familiar to many of you who are AccuQuilt Go users or acquirers of all these templates. But this is called the Flowering Snowball and it's a 12 inch finished block. And this is what it looks like on the outside of the template, template cover, which is very different from what we're doing with our project. But it gives you kind of the, the layout of the blocks themselves. And um, so if you have this template, definitely you gotta give this a try. It's really, really fun to, to do. And um, the back also, and this is gonna look like an infomercial, but the back gives you various layouts and ideas for how to use the, the die cut over and over again. Here is, again, our sample of one of the blocks that we have made. And I'm gonna go through the process of sewing this together and um, give you some tips and techniques for what I did. Each block is the same. And so when it comes to something like that, that I'm sewing for a quilt, I don't necessarily do sew each one together block by block. What I do is a lot of fast chain piecing when it makes sense. And this project did really give me the opportunity to do that. So let's take this block apart and show you each one of the pieces and we'll go through the steps to what I did kind of briefly on how to sew them together. And then we'll go to the sewing machine and put it together. Here is a sample of the flower garden block. This block, we incorporated the Tequila Sunrise fabric in the four petals and in the center square. Each one of our 30 squares uses the yellow from Tequila Sunrise. Let's take this apart so you can see how each one of the pieces goes together. And okay, we're going to start with the four corners. These are all background fabrics. So these are our gradation nautica, which is the darkest blue we have. So we'll put those as four corners, the yellow in the center, and then four of the petals. Now this gets into the red portion of Tequila Sunrise, which is so neat. So I would say that both of these blocks that I've laid out here are going to represent every shade combination from that one 45 inch wide piece of fabric. Okay. So those are the sections and components of this block. It's really, really simple. And what I do when I sew these together, since it's a common block that makes up the entire quilt, is I chain piece. And I'm gonna start by removing some of these pieces and then we're gonna make the block so you can see how easy the block is. And so disregard any curves, they are so simple to sew, okay? Our first step is to sew the center to two corner pieces. This is simple. We're simply going to use our basic stitching of right sides together, stitch a quarter inch. We're gonna fold it back. Then we're going to lay the other corner on and we're going to stitch a quarter inch and we're going to fold it back. We're not even going to press. We're just going to stitch 30 of these and then come back and add the corner piece to 30 of those. Okay, we'll be right back. Here's the center strip all sewn together and it's not pressed yet. So we'll just set this aside until we need it for one of the final steps. Next, what we need to do is sew the curves. Okay, so we're attaching a, a petal to a background piece. And on each one of the pieces, you will see a notch. That little notch is very important. <laughs> 
we want to line up those notches and don't even think about the curve but line up the notch and place a pin right in that spot okay on the back of that you will see a curve on the front you don't see the pedal at all now a lot of you might be very very accomplished when it comes to curves this is one of my very first projects when it comes to curves so i wasn't so accomplished but what i just found to be the easiest for me is i took the time to pin curving the blue fabric over to the top of the point of the pedal putting a pin also at the bottom of the curve and I angle the direction of the pin actually because if you put the pin straight across it seems to want to move the, the fabric seems to want to move by itself when we try to fussy it underneath the uh, presser foot of our sewing machine so I like to put it at an angle and I have to honestly tell you, I love these pins. These pins, um, I'm just going to take a minute to tell you, these pins are the magic pins and they are so extra thin and tiny and they just seem to work beautifully with a tightly woven batik, whether it be a cotton or a rayon. I absolutely love them. So if you're in the market for new pins, definitely go for these. So now we have each one of these pinned. I'm going to go ahead and pin the second one as well because like I said, I really like to chain piece. This way I'm not getting up and down from my sewing machine if I'm not sitting in the same spot or um, having to use so much more thread. I don't know. I just like to stay in one spot until I need to move and get the next piece of fabric going okay so for one pedal or for one block you're going to need two sets of pedals so I'll start by sewing one and then sewing the next and then we'll come back and do the other side I also always cut my threads while I'm processing my or while I'm sewing so I cut my threads cut my pieces apart take out the pins for the next curve and then see what happens voila and your edges are aligned on both sides with a nice curve in the middle okay it really is a very simple curve to piece i i you can't get it wrong Anyway, that's a good quilt for me to work on. So here's another petal. Let's finish the other side. And we're going to line up the center. Put a little pin in there. Curve the top blue fabric. And I will tell you, I always, maybe I mentioned this before, I always sew with the blue fabric on top of the other fabric simply because it moves more. The, the flower petal fabric, we don't want that to stretch. We just simply want to follow that along. So there's number one. Now we're going to grab the next and last flower petal and match up the centers, pin, match up the end, and pin it and one more back to the sewing machine As you can see, I am leaving the pins in. So that probably breaks every rule of every everybody who's ever told you to always remove pins. But I find first and foremost that the pins that I'm using are so thin that it, I've never hit 
the pin, but I don't want to move this so early to shift any of the fabric when I'm working on this curve. So I'm just going to get this started following my quarter inch and then I am going to tuck that one out of there and then sew a little bit more. Now you'll see that the blue fabric has more of a curve to it so it's got extra fabric so just guide this along okay as your quarter inch till you come to the middle and i just went right over the top of it then move it just a little bit and keep the blue right on top of the curve of the orange fabric below and then once you get to the end, you may see a pucker there, okay? Don't worry about the puckers. They never end up in the seam. Lift up your presser foot if you have to. You don't do this every time. I just noticed the pucker there. And then sew through it. Leave your needle in. Get your next piece of fabric, your next little portion, and continue sewing just like you did before. I've started that one. I'm going to remove my needle or my my pin and then I'm going to continue along the curve. There really is very little adjusting that's needed. I do pull this one out a little bit and then keep it going along the curve sewing a quarter inch. Okay, and I have a little bit of a tuck there. I'm going to move that aside and sew off the edge. Clip. And there's two of them sewn. Let's go back and add the other pieces. Okay, I've sewn the second petal on, and we're going to take out these pins. Whoops. I guess I can go to the right side here and cut these two pieces apart. Trim my threads. And there we have two petals attached to a background. And here's what the back looks like. It's just a simple curves, okay? Now that we have both of these, you have an option of two things. One, you can press your curves towards the pedal, okay? For both of these. Press the curve towards the pedal. Because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the piece that we originally made or sewed together, which is the center square plus the two backgrounds. And now it's time to join them in a much bigger curve. This one's actually easier. <laughs> but let me show you how we put these together and the sequence I did. I mean, it's, it's, there's no magic, magic way of doing this. But what I do is I start again by matching my points, pinning, matching my points, pinning, and then since I'm over here, I'm simply going to match that up on the corner and the corner over here. Again, you'll see, I'm not really moving my fabric very much because I don't want to have to lift it up and move it. Um, that just gets to be too much handling. Okay, now the center. We are going to create a nice little interlocking spot. I always pin before the seam so that nothing moves when you're sewing along the curve. And then I pin again right before the second seam. I probably wouldn't have to do that, but um, if I'm pinning anyway, I might as well take the time to do that. So then we'll stitch this across and we'll come back 
and we'll add the second side to it. Now again, I would have taken and chain stitched all six of these and then come back and add the second side to all six blocks. Each one of the colors, I might have mentioned this, but each one of the colors that we put into the quilt um, kit, there's five different shades and there's six blocks of each one. So I really found it easy to work in the six and get one color done. And then I would come back and I would do the chain stitching on the next six until I had all of them complete. So let's go to the sewing machine and stitch this curve down. Okay, now we are sewing the second side or the second petal onto the center background. Again, following that curve. So let's get this started and then line up our background fabric. And I do have to say, when working with curves, or until you really get the rhythm down on how you like to stitch along your fabric using your machine, um, you know, this isn't a race. So just get it so you really feel comfortable that everything is lined up. And hopefully my hand is not in the way there. And then you can't help but having amazingly perfect curves. Okay, let's get this started. Sew off one, start on another, remove the pin if you'd like. There we go. And I stop and make sure I have the rest of this right out to the edge of the curve. And there we have it. Two of them done. Let's go finish this up. I've sewn the second petal on and we're gonna take out these pins. Whoops, <laughs> I guess I can go to the right side here. And cut these two pieces apart. Trim my threads. And there we have two petals attached to a background. And here's what the back looks like. It's just a simple curves, okay? Now that we have both of these, you have an option of two things. One, you can press your curves towards the petal, okay, for both of these. Press the curve towards the petal. Because the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna take the piece that we originally made or sewed together, which is the center square plus the two backgrounds. And now it's time to join them in a much bigger curve. This one's actually easier. <laughs> but let me show you how we put these together and the sequence I did. I mean, it's, it's, there's no magic, magic way of doing this, but what I do is I start again by matching my points, pinning, matching my points, pinning. And then since I'm over here, I'm simply going to match that up on the corner and the corner over here. Again, you'll see, I'm not really moving my fabric very much because I don't want to have to lift it up and move it. 
Um, that just gets to be too much handling. Okay, now the center. We are going to create a nice little interlocking spot. I always pin before the seam so that nothing moves when you're sewing along the curve. And then I pin again right before the second seam. I probably wouldn't have to do that, but um, if I'm pinning anyway, I might as well take the time to do that. So then we'll stitch this across and we'll come back and we'll add the second side to it. Now again, I would have taken and chain stitched all six of these and then come back and add the second side to all six blocks. Each one of the colors, I might have mentioned this, but each one of the colors that we put into the quilt um, kit, there's five different shades and there's six blocks of each one. So I really found it easy to work in the six and get one color done. And then I would come back and I would do the chain stitching on the next six until I had all of them complete. So let's go to the sewing machine and stitch this curve down. This is the larger curve. So now we are attaching the center portion of the flower to one side of the flower petals. Okay, and so the curve is much bigger. And you see the center piece right on top here? Always work with the blue fabric on top. And you'll see it just naturally fits right along the curve. So just sew along, pulling the fabric if you need to, and disregard that I didn't take out the pin, but that's, I, I leave them in. I don't want things to move on me, and I don't know if that's the main reason why everything was lines up so successfully on this project, but for me, that works. So I'm gonna stick with whatever happens to work. Now, it looks like there's gonna be a little tuck there. I'm gonna pull that back. Sew straight along my center seams here. I am gonna move that one out. There we go. So that the seams join. And then I'm gonna slow up a little bit, recreate my curve on this side. Keep stitching. Got another pin, slow down, don't hit it. There we go. And I had a little bit of a problem with this one, but I think we'll be able to fi fix this and finish this off right there. Okay. So there is the curve on this particular piece. And we're gonna go back over, pin the second side and come back and stitch. We just finished sewing that big curve and trim, remove the pins. And look at that. Spectacular. That's what it looks like on the back. And now we have one more to go. And then we'll have a completed block. So the last portion of the flower petals, I'm feeling very repetitive. Pin the center, pin the center, and then the corner over here, which is the last little spot, Corner over here, which is where you start sewing. Remember, always sew with the blue fabric, from our kit anyway, but if you're working on this with your own fabrics, um, definitely use your background fabric always on the top. Now, let's pin these so that they interlock. 
and go to the sewing machine and finish our curve. We'll be right back. And now we're back with our last seam of this block. Get it started. And I'm gonna take the pin out of this one. And let's move the blue fabric over just a little bit to keep our curve and our quarter inch seam. If you have to, pull the bottom piece as you lift the blue as well. And then once we come up to the center, we want to always sew straight across. That is not a curve. Done with the seam. And then we're going to position the second curve of this. And just follow the quarter inch seam allowance. These guides are great. Can't exist without a quarter inch seam guide. And it looks like it's gonna pucker a little. So we're going to what? We're gonna lift this up, push the fabric back, put the presser foot back down again and finish our seam. Okay, all done. Okay, we're back from the sewing machine and we'll trim our threads, remove the pins, and what do we have? We have a completed block. And if you're chain piecing, you have six completed blocks. And there's the back, okay. Now what we need to do is press. So we're gonna press this flat. And continue making our blocks. Hi again. Well, we're back and you've learned how to make each one of the flower garden blocks, starting with one and ending up with 30. And I really, really hope you enjoy the simplicity of this project and get on our website and hopefully you will enjoy the project kit as well. Remember, it's 100% pre-cut. So you just start sewing and it's a lot of fun. Actually, I shouldn't say that. You should start organizing the colors to figure out what you want to do. There's so many different ways to put together a project like this. You could have put, I just randomly put the blocks up um, because I did kind of want it to look like a flower garden, but they can be diagonal. You can put the colors together in some sequence. You can do anything you want to do. You could also, one of the things I was thinking of is you don't even have to put the same color petal in the same block. And that would really give you an range of colors um, really, really creatively. And I think maybe also you see these circles, some of the circles might come out a little bit more too if they're all one color or if they're randomly mixed. So. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed our little educational tutorial on how to make the flower garden block. And again, um, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can see more of these fun projects. And um, we're also on Instagram and Facebook under Sew Boutique, and you'll see all of our new projects, specials, discounts, and newsletters. Take care. Have a great day.